Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Nets Goal Wins. Leicester have just beaten Norwich away at Carrow Road 2-1 and it was a performance that was needed from the team. After a bounce back against 5-2 loss obviously against Arsenal last week, we really needed to show proper gut check on what we were made of, what Ranieri's boys were made of after losing a game because it hadn't happened yet. We see what we sometimes are like when we lose games like last season we went on that horrible bad streak and would it be the same again? Thankfully, it doesn't look that way. Our squad looks much stronger, so strong, in fact, but we were able to leave out Starman Riyad Mahrez for the whole 90 minutes and still win the game. What happened then? How did it unfold? First few minutes, we looked really, really shaky. We couldn't really keep hold of a ball. Houlihan, who obviously is a player Norwich uh, like to give a ball to because he's very dangerous, he finds Cameron Jerome. Jerome finds it back to him. He finds Jerome again. Jerome then shoots over the bar, just over Schmeichel. If he'd have hit the target, I think it would have gone in because of the, the closeness and the power that he got on the shot. But couldn't find the target. Real, real let off for us early doors. And after that, we had to start knuckling down and then really showing what we can make in the game. And we really got back into the game. There are a few instances where Albrighton got crosses in and Okazaki was jumping for him but just failed to put him away. And then after that, we had another few chances with people getting in behind the wings. Albrighton got one where he got in behind the wing, pulled it back for Okazaki header, and, and it kind of went wide. It was a bit behind him. And eventually, lovely bit of play down the right-hand side. The ball's played in behind the back for, uh, for Vardy. Basson looks like he's going to get it. Vardy nips in front of him, just purely out of desire and want to get the ball. He nips in behind Basson. Basson nicks him. Vardy goes down. Penalty. I shouted penalty at the time purely... Because I was, I was not upset, you know, I mean, I wanted it to be a penalty. And the penalty was given, I couldn't really believe it, but penalty given, Vardy then steps up. The man who's top goal scorer in the Premier League, with confidence, runs in like Steve Armisen as a fast bowler, smashes it, other side as the diving John Ruddy in. 1-0 up, brilliant, brilliant start for, for us to go 1-0 up. Not to concede first, really, is the main thing. We don't want to keep coming behind from games, and... You know, Ranieri wants to keep this clean sheet eventually, and I'm sure he will eventually, but it's better to take the lead than have to keep trying to come back and show him what we're made of. And we went 1-0 up, like I said, Vardy was a really good penalty, and we had deserved it. We went into half-time 1-0, and Norwich really didn't create any clear-cut chances. They had a lot more possession than us, but as you lot know, we don't really get much possession in football games, but what we do with possession, we make the most of it. And then the second half, Norwich came out really fighting and made a few chances. One of them... Chance in on the from a corner, and then it kind of fell to Kante, mid area, about 46 47th minute. Kante plays it out wide, and then it gets it all the way down into the box. Kante slips it into Schlupp, Schlupp then finds it brilliantly, smashes it across the face of John Ruddy into the side netting. It's 2 0, and you couldn't believe it. Delirious scenes from the travelling city fans, and it was a really great finish from Schlupp. Schlupp's finishing is something that he really needed to work on his game for a few years now, and it Hopefully, this finishes a sign of something to come because I know he pulled one later on in the game, but it was a really, really good finish across the face. Lashed in, no chance for Ruddy to save it. 2 0 up, you're thinking we surely can't blow this one now. And we were well worth a 2 0 lead, like I've said before. It, was, it wasn't like we were outplayed in any way or it shouldn't have been 2 0. We really did deserve a 2 0 lead at that point. But maybe on Nathan Redmond, we put on Ujoa. Um, they brought on Nathan Redmond, Okazaki went off, Okazaki again didn't really do much, he's a brilliant harrier of the ball but he, he should have really done a few better, he had one chance especially where he was pushed out wide and he just kind of hit it aimlessly across the face of not a goal, not shooting and not crossing so I think Okazaki still has to do more to convince me, um, aside from that like I said Redmond came on for Norwich and instantly he looked dangerous, I don't know why he didn't start because I think Redmond's a really, really solid player. And like I said, he looked so dangerous when he came on down that right-hand side. Just that injection of pace can do so much in a football game. And he got down that right-hand side brilliantly, plays it in, into the box multiple times. Jerome can't do anything on it. Norwich then bring on a substitution. Umber Carney, the man they signed from Dynamo. In it, uh, and he, he kind of, just his physical presence, I guess, put... Something a bit different into the game. He was getting there. First kind of minute he came on, he, he had a header just past Hoof and Morgan. He had a header onto the onto the bar. Uh, he had kind of a, a chance where he should have tucked it away, coming across at the front post of his foot. But he does score one just like that. Ball gets crossed in. Uh, and McCartney's at the far post, sticks out a leg to slot it home nicely. It was quite funny that the Leicester Twitter account actually kept calling him uh, Cameron Jerome, which uh, was, was quite funny. Interpret that how you will, but they kept calling him Jerome. But Umbacani stuck it away, 
where I meant 2-1, and this is where I said it's gut check time. It was time to see what we were really made of, how much do we want these three points, and what can we do without... Obviously, Mares didn't come on, and I think it's good to show people around the, the league and pundits and everything, but we're not just Riyad Mahrez. We can win games without him quite quite well. I mean, we went 2-0 up. Schlupp looked like a better player left wing and left midfield, and he did it left back, and I think Fuchs did all right cover it. For his, for his first game, he hadn't had any Premier League experience before, so I think he did all right. He was more than capable replacement at left back if Schlupp wants to play further forward, or we obviously want to play Schlupp further forward. And yeah, everything seemed to start working for Norwich, though. They were coming back into the game. We were sitting deep. We brought three in at the back, and they were having loads and loads of chances. We were, though, having chances on the break. So every time they kind of had a corner, it seemed to come out of a break to us, and it would end up with Jamie Vardy at his feet. There was one Vardy had, he was one-on-one -on -one with Basson, Tried to take it on his left and it was nicked wide for a corner. But the guilt edge chance with a few minutes to go. Danny Drinkwater takes the ball out brilliantly on the, on the counter-attack. There's four against one, eventually four against two. He does well to hold off on the pass to Kante. Plays it into Vardy and Vardy uh, shoots straight at Ruddy in the end. For me, he's got to be finishing that because if he's playing and it's one all, then you want him to be finishing that chance. I know it was 2 ones, so but it didn't matter ultimately. But I want him to be finishing those chances no matter what just to show that he's ruthless. I know he had a bit of a niggle with his knee, etc, etc, but still, he, he had a chance just before that where the ball was played over and he took a lovely touch inside of the defender, then outside and then shot across the face of goal again, so his injury couldn't have been plaguing him that much. But yes, 2-1, away to Carrow Road, away at Carrow Road, I should say, and it was a really, really massive three points. We go back into the top four on 15 points now, and what a place to be. Who would have said that after eight games, us would be in the top four in the league? It really is a time to to really look where we are and stop looking down the table and think, well, we could actually be this top half team now. We're better than a lot of the sides who are going to be down there. But bottom half, you look at Newcastle and Sunderland who are already getting cut adrift and Villa are getting dragged into that now. And we're, what, 12 points and 11 points respectively clear of those three teams. So we can't, I don't think we're going to get relegated this season, definitely now. I can say that because to win away at Norwich, a tough place, a promoted team who are really going for it, is a real crucial three points. And to do it without Mares shows that we can win under any circumstances with any personnel on the pitch, really. And the most important thing was, like I said earlier, it was the first time we came from a loss into a game and then we won it, which is a brilliant sign for games to come because there will be other games this season we'll lose. I'm sure of that. We're not going to go the whole season without losing uh, more than one game. I'm sure when we come up against Chelsea and people like that and even some surprise defeats like... Southampton, Palace, teams like that, you never know, but we're going to come up with defeats, and then it's the next game where we have to bounce back, and we did it today, 15 points is a brilliant, brilliant total to be going into the international break with, you only need 40 to stay up realistically, and we only need 25 more points, and if you look at it like that, 25 more points, we've got that many points in kind of a month and a half, if you count August as half a month, we've got 15 points in a month and a half, so to get 25 in the rest of the season, hopefully we can do that and knuckle down. There are a few standouts for me, you can see my player ratings, but standouts for me, obviously Vardy has to go again just because of his work rate, is phenomenal. I mean, I know we talk about it, it'll become cliche and overuse, but his work rate is absolutely top draw. I don't know any other striker in the whole of the world, let alone the Premier League, who's got his kind of work ethic and work rate. He just puts defenders under pressure purely out of fear of what he could do if he gets to them because he's so fast and it, it's just a massive key for us to have. I don't care if he doesn't play for England or whatever. For us, he's brilliant and that's all that matters. He's Leicester City's number nine. Forget England's number nine, he's Leicester City's number nine and he keeps delivering. He's top goal scorer in the Premier League, still going into the international break. Aguero tried his best to get up to Jamie Vardy. I know he looks up to Vardy as a role model. I think he said that in a recent interview. Only joking, of course, but yeah, Aguero tried his best to get close to Vardy today, but Vardy's still sitting at the top of the tree. Mahrez obviously couldn't add any more. Uh, away from that, I think the, the defence had a pretty good game. I thought Simpson was quite good until he came off through injury. I thought he did nothing wrong. Uh, Fuchs, again, I thought was all right. Schmeichel, as always, was quite solid. But Kante, I talk about him quite a lot. Kante and Drinkwater, until kind of late on in the game where they were getting outrun, purely because of numbers, I think they were both really, really good again. They gave the ball away a bit too much, but defensively, winning the ball back, they were exceptional. And when there were chances to go forward, in a few occasions, they did provide the perfect ball. Kante is just brilliant at winning the ball back. Obviously, Arsenal last week's a different calibre because there's so many players, but... In games we should be winning, not necessarily this one I'm saying, but when we play Norwich at home, for example, Conte is the perfect man to have because he just 
neutralises counter-attacks and means they can't get forward. But anyway, that is all for this video. Please leave your comments below, let me know what you thought of the game. Please like the video, as always, and as I always say, I'll see you in the next one.